and we're going to just sing a different song this morning as we go around and greet each other. Of course, we're going to observe the COVID protocol still. We're going to greet each other with the elbow.
We would like to present you the certificate of baptism. Praise the name of our Lord for you, brother. Oral Ailes, who got baptized on the 7th of May 2022 and dedicated his life to the Lord. So, Be 
be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the sight of men and common craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speak the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head even Christ. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word that was read this morning. We pray that you, God, will speak to us. We pray even as, oh God, that you speak to me, to your people, that we will have clarity of thought, that your word will go forward with power, that souls will be delivered, that souls will be enlightened, that souls will be nourished and grow in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Somebody clap their hands. Thank the Lord for the reading the word. For so this morning, we want to look to the subject, the fivefold ministry. And this is a season where the Lord is leading us to speak to us so that we can have a full understanding of what He is doing in this time through His people. This month being the month of July, the Lord led us, and we know the seventh month of the year, it speaks to number seven Bible scholars, you know it speaks to what? Perfection and completion, right? And so we have to understand what it takes for the body of Christ to be perfected. And so God drew my attention to this passage of scripture, and we're going to begin this series, we're going to be doing it, this is just an introduction today, but for the next few weeks, we're going to be looking at the fivefold ministry, and why it is important, and why it is relevant in this time. Somebody say relevant. Because sometimes we think that there are no more apostles, we think there are no more prophets, we think, you know, it's only teachers, pastors, and evangelists. Beloved, I'm here to tell you that in the early church, you had more, if you read the scripture, go through the entire New Testament, you will realize that you had mention of more apostles and prophets than even pastors. Did you know that? <laughs> Beloved, there is not one person in the scripture, if you read from Genesis 1 to Revelation, that you will see is a pastor. The only time pastor is mentioned in the Bible is here in the office of the fivefold. But we realize that we have the office of the prophet mentioned hundreds of times in the Bible. And we have apostles mentioned dozens of times. We have about what, 25 apostles that were named, just named, there were more, but we have 25 apostles that were named in the New Testament. So it is important, God wants us to understand that the fivefold ministry is not just important, but it is relevant and it is something that we have to invest our time, we have to invest our efforts, and we have to come to the understanding of how important and how powerful the fivefold ministry is. Now, we, we, we understand now that in scripture, there are five callings, five offices. They work in tandem. The word of God says he gave some apostles, he gave some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers. Now the term fivefold, it comes from, it derives, it, it, you won't find it fivefold ministry. No, fivefold ministry, you won't see it in the word, but it comes from the thought, scholars put it together from Ecclesiastes, sorry. Chapter 4, and I want to read that very quickly. We're going to do a quick Bible study, and I want you to follow in your Bibles. Turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 10 and 12. Keep it in mind. We're going to do a quick Bible study. Somebody say quick Bible study. We can do Bible studies on Sundays, you know what? says, for if they fall, one will lift up his fellow, but woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? And 
if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. A threefold cord is what? Not quickly broken. And so we have it scholars would take from that scripture to support here in Ephesians 4 that yes we know we might not see the word fivefold ministry but the word fold it talks about intertwined and just as we see it here in Ecclesiastes chapter 4 where it says a threefold cord is not easily broken it's the same principle that says a fivefold cord when we have the office of the fivefold ministry working in tandem it is not easily broken it is something that this when we talk about spiritual warfare, the fivefold ministry, that rank of the fivefold, it is able to stand against principalities, territorial spirits. Why? And not easily broken because it is folded and intertwined together for the edifying of the body of Christ. Somebody say fivefold. Fivefold. Yes. And so the fivefold ministry is very important for the local church. There must be a balance of the fivefold ministry in the local church. That is this church. All churches, the body of Christ must have a balanced approach so that the fivefold ministry from the apostle to the teacher is manifested and we understand it in the body of Christ. Somebody say amen. amen. So when we look at what's happening even locally here in Jamaica, we know that there is a lack of balance. There is a serious lack of balance, you know, because it is easier for persons to say that they want to be a prophet. You know why? Because it's easier to say than to do, you know. You know that? It is easier to talk than to actually put it words into action. So what we realize now, we have the fivefold ministry, and what should be very balanced is you have apostles established, prophets established, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, where we have a balanced approach in every local assembly. But what we have now is we have more persons now trying to be prophets because a prophet is somebody that yes might take the center stage and can prophesy and say, "Thus said the Lord." And it is very easy to say that, you know, you know that? You know that it's very easy for somebody to even come up here right now and say, Thus saith the Lord. And because, you know, sometimes you might not, some people might not even be in the spirit, they might understand, they might just believe that, yes, it is God speaking. But let me tell you something. It is, it is very important that we get this bit of it. The day we have an influx in the body, focus, focus. The day we have an influx in the body and we have too many persons trying to flood into one office of the fivefold. That is going to create an imbalance and it causes the enemy to triumph over us because the fivefold ministry is effective in the local church when there is balance. Somebody say balance. Yes. yes. It's not very easy to be an apostle because an apostle takes action. It's not just word. It's not very easy to be a pastor because the word of the pastor is, 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 is a lot of work. Evangelist. Everybody knows the evangelical is not very easy because it takes a lot of work. And the teacher has to apply himself to the word of God so that he absorbs that word and he can, uh, we can properly articulate it and feed the body of Christ. But because persons out of ignorance think that the prophet is all about just saying, thus said the Lord, we have people trying to become prophets and evading and walking away from their call. I submit to you. That over 60 percent of those persons that say they are prophets in Jamaica right now, they are not. I wonder if I can take my time and teach this. I said over 60 percent of those persons in Jamaica right now that are saying that they are a prophet, beloved, they are not. A lot of them are called even to other offices. While some might not be even called to the fivefold, there are others, they are actually teachers. But because it sounds more attractive, and because the lights are sometimes on the prophet, they want to be called a prophet. While ignoring the true call that they have been called to. My God, somebody said, Help us, Lord. Now we have to understand that the fivefold ministry is a calling. The fivefold ministry is not a gift. And this is important. We have to lay the foundation. The fivefold ministry, it is a calling and not a gift of the Spirit. Somebody say calling. Calling. It is a calling and not a gift. And listen, 
the fivefold ministry, the, 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 it's important to understand. You cannot just get up and say, I want to be an apostle. I want to be a prophet. You can't just say, I, I want to be a pastor. No, while spiritual gifts you can pray for. Because 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 1, Paul tells the church in Corinth that you should do it. Desire spiritual gifts. Yes, and earnestly pray for them. And earnestly what? Seek to prophesy. So yes, the spiritual gifts we can pray for. And you can seek God for. But the office of the fivefold is something that you have to be called into. Somebody say called into. Yes. I want you to listen to me very, very important this morning. Very, very important that you listen. So you cannot just get up and say, I want to be an apostle. Pastor cannot just get up and tell the church that, listen, I am now a prophet. Or I am an evangelist. You cannot just do that. What we have to do is, when you are called into the office, it is twofold. It is where you are, you experience a call from God. An encounter. You have to have a personal encounter from God. So anybody that is a prophet, that doesn't have a personal encounter of God, where God himself releases that grace upon them to be a prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, and apostle, then you know that they are in error. You get that? So anybody that does not, if you do not have a personal encounter with God for the grace of the fivefold, the calling to be released upon your life, then that's the first thing you're in error. And then secondly, you have to, you have to, that grace now has to be publicly commissioned on you with somebody who has the grace to release it on you. So it's twofold. Somebody who has the grace, somebody who has the rank, has to commission you into the call. While you also have to get the call and the grace of God has to be released in your life. Yes. And it's important to note that everybody has spiritual gifts. Touch yourself and say, I have a gift. Tell your neighbor, you have a gift. Now ask them, what is your gift? If you know your gift, answer them. Is there anybody here that knows the gift of the Spirit that is, that is bestowed upon you? You know the gift of the Spirit. Raise your hand if you know. If you know a gift that you have, raise your hand. Look, if you put up your hand, would not like you're nervous. Good. Good. Now is there anybody here that you know that you have had your personal encounter with God and you were also you also received the laying of the hands of the presbytery? You have a calling in the fivefold ministry. You are called in the fivefold ministry. Let me see your hand. Very good. You see, you have to make sure we make it very, very simple, you know, because you receive your personal encounter and you also have to receive the laying of hands from the presbytery so that the grace of God, because there has to be a personal encounter, but there has to also be a public commission. The apostles, they had to receive that grace from Jesus Christ himself, and they too then received that public commission where he told them, he told them, listen, after praying and bestowing that grace on him, he said, listen, go! Paul himself had that experience on the Damascus Road, that personal encounter with God, where God struck him down. And then afterwards, being with Barnabas, they laid hands on them and they sent them. So every apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, you first have to receive that personal encounter with God. And after that grace is bestowed upon you, beloved, you then have to be publicly commissioned so that somebody lay hands on you confirming and establishing the call of God on your life. Are we clear? So now we understand that person going around that say that they are a pastor. There are some pastors, beloved, that nobody, they, first of all, they don't even get a call. Don't even get a call from God. Nobody then laid hands on them 
and release them and establish them by confirming that call. And you cannot have one and not have the other. Because there are some that, believe it or not, are teachers, evangelists, that receive the laying of hands, but they still have not received that one-on-one -on -one download from God where the encounter, that encounter with God. Somebody say encounter. Encounter. Beloved, are we focused? Are you listening to me? Are you learning? That is why it is important that every individual has to have their own encounter with God. Everybody, you must have your own encounter. Because this is Pastor Lewis. Before I was said, listen, get certification and say, listen, hands laid on and say, you're a pastor. I had to get that encounter where the calling came to me to be a pastor. If somebody just gave me a piece of paper and said I was a pastor, beloved, I would be in error. You know that? Yes. And even if I received my encounter from God, if I did not have a covering, somebody to say, listen, you are commissioned and you are released and they are, they are actually sanctioning to this. Listen, the call of God is on your life and you are covered and you are established. If that is not done, I would be in error. So the fivefold ministry, this, this is the God, God creates this because listen, there has to be accountability. You know that? The members of the fivefold ministry, we have to be accountable to ourselves and we have to be accountable to God. Because it's not about just running wild and doing what we want to do or doing what feels good. Because listen, you know, like there are some prophetic words, sometimes it is spoken and it is spoken in error. And you know why it's spoken in error? Because there is no covering. There is no sick man or woman there who laid hands on that person to say that, that, that they say that they were a prophet. There was no laying of hands to commission them. My God Almighty. Somebody said amen. amen. Yes. So then, according to Ephesians 4 verse 11, we're looking now at, yes, the fivefold ministry is important, but what is the purpose now of the fivefold ministry? The first purpose is the perfecting of the saints. And then verse 13 said what? The work of the ministry. And the third, for the edifying of the body. Let's say that together. Number one, the perfecting of the saints. Two, the work of the ministry. And three, the edifying of the body. Beloved, when we accept Jesus Christ, we're going to be focusing on the first point today because we can't complete everything. The first point, the perfecting of the saints. And it's important that we understand what this means, the perfecting of the saints. Somebody say the perfecting of the saints. Perfecting of the saints. Yes. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, and you are born into the body of Christ, immediately what happens is now you are now developed. And so once you come into the body of Christ, the first thing on God's agenda is to ensure that the fivefold ministry is established in the local church so that you can be developed unto perfection. Development is very important. And that is why we say to you that everybody that comes in, development starts immediately. Somebody at the same time. Same time. That is why when Brother Oral here, he receives, he's baptized. And he comes into the body of Christ. Immediately we begin to start to teach him and develop him so that he can grow. Amen. Because it's not enough to just come in and say, listen, I am baptized. And yes, I am on my way to heaven. Beloved, that is stagnation. Growth is about impact. So for the world now coming as a new convert, his purpose has to be fulfilled. The gift of the spirit that is in him. He might not be called to the office of the fivefold, but there is a gift that is given to him. Every man gets a gift. Everyone gets a gift. The word of God says the gifts of God, they are given what? Without repentance. That means when the gift of God is given to you, God doesn't take it back. And that is why some persons will get saved. And even after leaving 
church at a point all the time being a rich before God and having a riotous living like the, like the prodigal son. Beloved, they'll still prophesy. Yes, yes. You know that? Yes. Because the gift of God that is in them is still there. God don't take back the gift, you know. It's just that when they walk away from God, the anointing, that, that unction now, it wanes. And so when you walk away as if you're a prophet, let's use prophet. If you're a prophet and you are commissioned by God and you will receive the encounter and the laying of hands and you decide that you're going to walk out of the body of Christ and leave church. Beloved, you may say you're a prophet, but listen man, when that unction, if the anointing and that unction is not on you because you're stepping out of the presence of God and you no longer have that presence of God, you know what you're doing? It's divination. You know that? So a lot of persons that they no longer have a covering and they have stepped outside of the will of God even though the gift of God is there and they're saying that they're still using it beloved they're using it to the wiles of the enemy they are causing ripple effects in the spirit of divination that is why if sometimes you have to just be quiet if you know beloved if you know you step away from God and you know that you're far away from the grace of God. Even though you have the gift. Sometimes you have to just sit down and make sure. Say, listen, you know what? We'll find out the place with God. Yeah. You know that? Yeah. Yes. So, everybody has to know. Look, once you are saved, you now have to be perfected. Perfected. And when we talk about perfection, now we're coming, we're talking about coming to full maturity. Where you are now ready to be the bride of Christ. You are now ready to receive and meet the bridegroom. Somebody say maturity. maturity. Yes. So the very first thing we're seeing here in the word of God. Paul is saying to the church in Ephesus. That listen. The, the fivefold ministry is given. The very first thing which is foundation. It is given for what? The perfecting of the saints. So that, look, listen, the reason why you have teachers and you have pastors, the office of the fivefold, the first responsibility of the office of the fivefold is to ensure that the church, the body of Christ, is ready to meet the bridegroom. Before you prophesy, before you teach, before you lay hands, before any gift of God is there, you must make sure that, listen, a man, as a child of God, when you come in the house, you are perfected towards salvation. You are perfected to see God. Amen. I want to hear me. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Now when we talk about the bride of Christ, the bride of Christ is the perfected body ready to meet the bridegroom. I want to hear about that. So you have the body of Christ, which is the church. But then the bride of Christ is when the body is perfected to receive and meet the bridegroom. My God. I want to catch this. So the foundation of the fivefold ministry, the very first thing that Paul is saying to the church is listen, fivefold ministry, make sure that the body of Christ is ready. Before there are prophecies, before there are gifts activated. Listen, the important thing is it is foundation. Make sure that every member is ready. The body of Christ is matured and perfected so that the body of Christ can be a bride. Hmm. So, guess what now? If the bridegroom should come, and those persons in the body of Christ are not found worthy, not found ready and waiting. You know what happened? The five-fold ministry fear right away. No? Because the very first assignment is what? Perfecting. Perfecting the saints. So if God comes and he's looking for holiness and he's looking for persons to be righteous and found in the right standing so that your garments are white and you are ready to meet him. If you are not in that state, if God comes and listen to the five-fold ministry in a sense then, if God comes and you are not ready, then the five-fold ministry would have failed in perfect in the saints. 
Because the body of Christ will always have issues. The body of Christ will always be broken. Remember, my beloved, the body of Christ is the church. The body of Christ is you and me. You're following me? The body of Christ is you and me. Do you have any issues right here? Is there anybody here that have issues in your life? Lift your hand. Yes. Yes. The body of Christ is not perfect. The body of Christ is made perfected on that day when the trump sound and the bride of Christ, those that are the bride of Christ, that is what it, because listen, there's a remnant, you know, there are persons in the body, you know, that listen, a man prophesy but will not be saved. There are persons in the body of Christ, you know, my brother, that lay hands and cast out devils, but will not be the bride. I wonder if you believe that. Turn your Bibles to St. Matthew 7. St. Matthew 7, 22. And it says, many, and this is Jesus speaking now. This is Jesus speaking. This is the Sermon on the Mount. And this is Jesus speaking. He says, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I profess unto them, this is Jesus telling them, saying, listen, and then will I profess unto Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So there are persons in the body of Christ. The body of Christ is not perfect. There are persons who will be missing the mark and focusing on yes, we must prophesy and yes, we must cast out devils, but they are not looking towards perfection. Elevating the gift over being perfected in Christ Jesus. This is Jesus Himself saying this. Verse 24 now. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And so the fivefold ministry comes to ensure that beloved, you are built up and preserved on the rock, which is Christ Jesus. The very first thing, the very first order of business as the fivefold ministry is to ensure that daily the church is being perfected through Christ. Yes. Turn your Bibles now to St. Matthew 25. St. Matthew 25. Verse 1 to 12. And this is the parable of the ten virgins. 25. Verse 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise and five were? They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. This is the this is this is, you know, this is the body now. You know. The word of God here is showing that this is the body, that you have some that are wise. Because guess what? They made sure that they have enough lamp, uh, oil in their lamp. But they, even though you had five wise, you also had five that were what? Foolish, because they did not carry enough oil. And so the body then slept everybody because they were all virgins. Remember, no, ten virgins. They were all in the same state. This parable is showing us that this is the body of Christ, the same state. But then you have some that are wise and some that are foolish. And then verse 7 says, then what happens now? Verse 6. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all the virgins arose. Everybody in the body now ready you now. To say yes, we're going forward. And then trim their lamps. But then verse 8 
it says what? And the foolish said unto the wise, I think there's somewhere on here, please. Why? For our lamps are gone out. My God Almighty. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourself. And while they were while they went to buy, while they went to try and get ready, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to be married. And the door was what? Shut. Verse 11. Afterwards came also the other virgins very late. Lord, Lord, open unto us. Verse 12 said what? But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, what am I? I know you not. Is it the same words being echoed now? You know? So you have St. Matthew 25 echoing the very same statement in St. Matthew 7. You know? Jesus giving the sermon on the mount saying, Listen, if the body of Christ is not perfected to ensure that they are upright first, if the foundation is not built so that we are perfected to see God, then we are going to prophesy and cast out devils and be lost. Or we're going to be, some are going to be wise. And then you're going to have others that are foolish who do not have enough oil. So when the bridegroom comes, not ready. But I don't know about you, I am going to be ready. I am moving forward to perfection. Somebody lift your hand and say, I shall be ready. Somebody lift your hand and say, I shall be perfected. We have to be perfect, beloved. We have to be perfect. Time is at the I'm going to skip some of this information. But beloved, God is reminding us that perfecting is being ready. It's not enough to say, I am in the body. But we now have to now have that focus that yes, I am in the body, but then there are persons in the body who will be left behind. The word of God tells us that there are persons in the body, some are wise and what? Some are foolish. And so it's not enough just to say I am in the body, but God gives the gift of the fivefold ministry. These callings are given to the body of Christ to first ensure that the body is made perfected. Yes. And I have to share this with you before I, I close this part up because there are some persons who will say, there are others that are out there that teach. And they believe that, listen, the bride of Christ is only the house of Israel. Did you know that? There are some persons that say that, you know, that the bride of Christ is only the Jews. <laughs> and they say the body of Christ just remains to be Gentiles. So they have two, they have the body being Gentiles and they say the bride of Christ because God was married to the they said the real bride is the house of Israel. But that is not so, that is error. I want you to turn your Bibles again because I have to do this. You have to ensure that we're line upon line, precept upon precept. Revelation 21. Turn your Bibles to Revelation chapter 21. Follow with me. Verse 2. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as the bride, adorned for her husband. John to verse 9. And there came unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, and I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven. Verse 11. Having the glory of God and our light was like unto a stone most precious, even like jasper, clear as crystal, and had walls great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the tribes of Israel, of the children of Israel. Verse 13. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. Verse 14. 
And the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Somebody say the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Yes. So clearly here we're seeing in scripture when John saw this revelation, he saw first, he saw 12 gates, three on each side of the city made square. And these gates, each gate had what? The tribe of Israel, their names written there. And that is showing us that it is dictating the old covenant. Somebody say old covenant. Old covenant, old testament. But if it is stop there, if he stopped there, no, he would have had a problem today as Gentiles, you know. You know that? But then he said that he saw the foundation, 12 foundations. This city had 12 foundations. The new Jerusalem with what? The names of the apostles dictating the new covenant, the new testament. And so, beloved, the bride of Christ, now we have to understand the bride of Christ will encompass all the prophets, all the stewards from the Old Testament, as well as those persons in the body of Christ, now New Testament apostles. Everybody that is called, even the Jews that will go through the years of, the, of tribulation, they will be in the bride of Christ. So I say, I need to be in the bride of Christ. I need to be in the bride of Christ. Yes. And so, beloved, as your pastor, it is incumbent on me to ensure that we lay the foundation. That before we even talk about, because I can see that some people want to get to the nice part where we talk about prophecy and, and the power of the apostle and the pastor and the teacher. We're going to get here, but guess what? We have to ensure that the foundation is laid properly because the word of God declares that the perfecting of the saints is the first priority. Yes, the perfecting of the saints is the first priority because when God comes for this, listen to this, when the, when, when the trumpet sounds, <laughs> beloved, there are churches right now because the fivefold ministry is not properly established in balance. Remember, what I said balance? balance? Balance. Then the body of Christ, we have our local assemblies that are being fractured and broken. When the fivefold ministry is active and is established, even in this local assembly, that's why it's important for us to have the heart of a pastor and the heart of a teacher and teach the word. When it's established, you must realize that, listen, you must be perfected unto Christ first. Before we even talk about the ministry, and before we even talk about doing, and before we even talk about how through the fivefold ministry, the body of Christ is edified, we have to understand that rule number one is you must be perfected. Somebody say perfected. Yes. And perfected doesn't mean that you are devoid of sin. But it means that you are mature. Mature daily taking up that cross and following Jesus. I want you to stand with me. We're beyond time. God wants to shine a light on the offices of the fivefold ministry because in this time we need the apostle, we need the prophet, we need the pastor, the evangelist, and the teacher to be active. We need those persons who have gifts of the spirit. We need those gifts to be stirred up. Yes? There will be nobody who is lazy in kingdom grace. There will be no bench warmers in kingdom grace. Every one of you who have a gift of God. Not everybody is called to the fight for ministry, but everybody has a gift. Lift your hand and say, I am a gift. And that gift must be stirred up. lose your soul. 
We will not prophesy and not be a part of the brand. We will not cast out devils and not be a part of the brand. We will not be foolish, but we will be wise. Beloved, the scripture that we are ready now, and you will learn this, when the five-fold ministry is established, one of the very first gifts that is established, you know, and it flows through the house, is the word of wisdom. Go ahead and read 2 Corinthians chapter 12, when it talks about Paul, talks about the gifts of the Spirit, and then he, he breaks it down. Beloved, the word of wisdom flows, because I tell you this, when we are in error, and when we are in ignorance, it is only the gift of the Spirit that will pull us in order. That is why, in the scripture we read right there, at the end of it, Jesus said, listen on don't be like the fool that build your house on the sand. Be like what? The wise that builds on the rock. And in St. Matthew 7, Jesus, he says it again. This is the word of wisdom. You know? He said that, listen, man, make sure that you are not foolish and you are not prepared to meet the bridegroom. But ensure that you are found in those who are
we were invited to celebrate with our father, Apostle Courtney McLean, and he received the call. Somebody say the call. And he also received the laying on of hands from the presbytery to functionize and establish that he's now walking in the office of, a, of an apostle. Somebody clap your hands and come together. And he sent his greetings to us. So no matter who we are, there's a right way to do it. You have to receive the call and you have to be functionized. And I'm telling you, this month, some of you, you're going to receive that call from God. You're going to get that, that encounter that you've always been searching for. But we have to do it with the understanding. You need that encounter so that you can develop, so that we can go ahead and commission you into service. Is there someone here that wants to work for the Lord? When we left the service, I left with a word in my spirit. It was send me. Somebody just say send me. Send me Lord. You want to be sent by God? Yes. Send me. The office of the fivefold, you must be called and then you are sent. If you are called and you go before your saint, it's troubling you. You know why? Because you get the call, but you are not yet matured and you're going by yourself. Somebody say you went instead of your sin. <laughs> so it's a stage where you realize how important this is, beloved. You receive the call, but you must be developed before you are sent. And so that's what is causing fractures and breaks into the body of Christ because everybody wants to wait before they were sent. So, yeah, men and women out there that are called, you know. But the maturing, the perfecting is not yet done. And we we'll run ahead before being prepared. But we will not be wind. We're waiting until we are sent. Somebody put your hands. Yes. Lord, we do not want to stay up late and 
to reap the bread of sorrow. We don't want to serve for months and years, and then at the end of the day, you look at us and you say, you never knew us. We do not want to function in ignorance, but we apply our hearts to wisdom. Continue to speak to us, Lord. Give us the heart and the spirit to love your word. That when your word is being taught, that we will open our minds, that we will eat it up, that we will be open to receive your word so that we can be developed and matured in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. 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 Look, I'm going to ask us to adopt a heart to learn.
It's the first time we're seeing you, my brother. Is your first time? Yeah. I was in in the You were invited by uh, Sister Lena? Sister. Wow. Somebody clap your hands and thank you. Yeah. You believe that God can deliver, right? You believe that God can deliver, right? I my brother, so yes or no? Yes, I am being I'm being delivered. Alright. Yes. Simple question. You believe that God can deliver your answer one more time. Yes, yes. or no? Yes. Yes, right? Yes. Hmm. Church, what can I do it? It's not by chance that you came here today. Amen. I don't know. I don't think you know that. I don't think you know that. It's not by chance. The devil wants to kill you and he wants to rob from you and he wants to steal everything from you. You know that? But we serve a God that is merciful. God, the God that I serve is rich in mercy. Somebody say rich in mercy. Rich in mercy. Uh, I am happy for what God is doing for you right now because the hand of the Lord is extended to you. Mercy. Somebody say mercy again. Mercy. You shall not die. We cancel death over you. You will not go in the grave. As a matter of fact, we pull you out. London Barakatamba Katosha.
that you would receive from. There's a flow of worship that I flow in, and God is saying that He wants you to honor that grace and learn because He's about to expand you. Right? I want the next time I lead worship, I want you to be here to be with me. Because there has to be a practicality to it where you can learn. So there's a dimension of pastor Lewis that is pastor, but then there's also a worshiper. And God is saying that He wants you to tap into that flow. There's going to be a pruning. There has to be a pruning. For God to cause expansion, there are friends that must be pruned. There are relationships that must be pruned. You know them. Pruning hurts. The cutting away of flesh always hurts. But that is sacrifice. You must sacrifice into it. Because you have to learn to operate in isolation. That's what the Lord says. You have to be comfortable with operating in isolation. You must be comfortable with operating in isolation. It doesn't mean isolation from your mother and your father. But it is dependent on other person's perception of who you are. It doesn't matter what people think who you are. What matters is you have to have an assurance who you are in God. Amen. Be isolated in that thought. No matter. It is, beloved, sometimes you have to be so sure of what God called you to that it don't matter what nobody else does. You stand firm in that. Father, you release her in grace. Father, we see your worship in her. We thank you, O oh God, for speaking this word over her. Her life, this word of knowledge. Father, even now, the gift and the call. Landam Bakatai. Let there be a story. In the name of Jesus. Let there be a story. Father, ignite hunger in her that she will seek you until she finds you. Ignite in her the hunger that causes yes. her to seek you with all her heart.
because we still have somebody of Christ and we lazy and we don't know the work. God is just pulling some people and he's accelerating their growth. If you if you come in this church and you see people grow faster than you and lead them, then you're not nobody to blame with yourself. Be prepared to grow. Be prepared to grow. I see acceleration coming to you. God is going to grow you and mature you. I'm going to work in closely with you. We're going to help to develop you myself and lady in voice. We're going to be developing you. Shut you. 
you into the earth. So God don't allow you to be born and then decide to give you something. He creates a purpose before you're even born and then he releases you to fulfill it. God is saying, you come into him now. It's about fulfilling the purpose of God and his name. So that his name can be glory. Somebody can be glory.
Look, you know, sometimes we can pray and we think that, you know, maybe God don't hear us. Or maybe it's not the time for you to move. But God is saying, He heard you. And He's about to move. Somebody say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He heard you and He's about to move. You need grace. You need grace. You need grace. You need grace. But right now, we release the grace of God upon you. The grace to go on. The grace to make that step. The grace to run. The grace. The grace and the strength. Father, increase your faith. Let her know that you are the God of the impossible. It shall be done. Somebody say, shall be done. Sorrow, we declare the blessing of the 
Lord to be upon him right now. Right now. Father, let a hedge be upon him. Let a hedge be around him. We declare him covered under the blood and secured in you. No enemy shall come nigh him. If the enemy comes one way, he must be seven ways because the hand of God is on him. We call for the spiritual firewall around him and his family. Impregnable. The enemy will not be able to penetrate. He is covered and hidden in God. And we thank you. In Jesus' name.
Praise God. She says that she wants she's coming for prayer for herself, but she also wants to, to share with us that the Lord spoke to her just to, to, to remind us and to encourage us to pray and to pray and to pray and to pray for ourselves. That's it. Yes. And believe. She says, pray and believe. That's the word that the Lord is giving her. Pray and believe. Someone say, pray and believe.
bless you, I bless you. You will not backslide. You said from your mouth that you want to be baptized, that you want to serve the Lord. You will not backslide. We cover your hand of the blood of Jesus. Somebody said, grounded firm and deep. Grounded firm and deep. Hallelujah. My God Almighty. Yes, yes, yes. Purpose. She's going to, she's going to, she says she, she's going to grow quickly. Lord be upon your husband. Alan, 
the transfer of all of the resources that Han must be released. We call for the resources needed for her business to be released right now. We release the location. Somebody say location. Yes, let the location find you. You've been looking for it, you can't find you. But right now, we are praying that the location will find you. In Jesus' name. Somebody say yes. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Sister Bright. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. It's time to go. It's time to go. It's time to go in the Word. Right? God wants you to start in the Word. We're going to be having the Lord says, be the comfort to us. Even if it's me and your own, we're going to be the comfort to us because we're going to be growing the word. The Lord has a lot of promises for you. There's a lot of things that I see happening for you. Service. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Women of service, I'm getting ready. 